Strong, how do you feel in there? Uh, right now, we're about three weeks away, so I'm about like uh, 80, 85 percent of my shape. Uh, I don't need to be top shape right now, I need to peak the well, I'm about to peak in about like 10 15 days, so right now, we're on time. How excited are you for this fight to get that second opportunity to make things right against Kobala? I'm very excited, I'm very motivated because the first fight was a great fight. It was a close fight, and uh, like some doubt now saying there was a one way fight, but if you watch the tape, it was a very close fight because I was on my way back. The fifth, the sixth round, I won those rounds, so I was on my way back, but the referee stopped the fight a little bit too soon. That's why we have a rematch. We gotta mix it up once again for the position of the fight. I heard you listening to Roy Jones in there. <laughs> How much fun were you having and how much do you like Roy? Giving his music. Yeah, no matter what, uh, there's two pack, big and small, then Roy Jones. <laughs> uh, sorry, Shadow Box, you still have a lot of what Roy Jones Jr. touch you in there. And if you have to shake that loose, or do you think that benefits you still? Uh, that still benefits me. Uh, when I was young, I watched so many tapes of Roy Jones growing up. He was kind of my model. Mm. So, of course, I do have some Roy Jones in me. But at the same time, I want to forge my own style. So if I if I can be a mix of Jean Pascal and Roy Jones, I think I'm going to have the best of both worlds. How does Freddie Rush feel about that? You adding the Roy Jones uh, style of game plan to your... Uh, to your uh, Freddie is ready to, to make me have my hands up. To sit a little bit more, but he do understand that I'm a black fighter, I'm a versatile, I'm a brother, I know how to dance. <laughs> so I have to dance in the ring at the same time. I have to show uh, my skills, I have to show that I got potential, I got skill, so I have to be versatile. What are we going to see? Some of the racist uh, things that he's somewhat done, you know, um, a lot of people criticize him for it, but he says it's all a joke, you know. That's not a joke. Uh, racism doesn't have its place in 2016. Uh, he's saying that uh, that was a joke, but that wasn't the first time he, he treated a black guy a monkey. He said the same thing with Ismail Schlack when he fought Schlack uh, back in 2013. He said he's a monkey because he's half black and half, uh, half white, whatever. And then uh, he said he's going to kick his black ass. So, and then he said the comment about Stevenson. You can make a mistake once, but when you do the, mis the same mistake twice, three times, that's not a mistake. He's racist. Why do you think? You want to put a hurt on him, so to speak, to Of course, because this, so, this is so disrespectful. Uh, of course, uh, black people, we're not monkeys. You are a human being, like white, Chinese, yellow, whatever. We're not monkeys. Uh, we, are being, uh, we are one race, but we're not monkeys. And that was so disrespectful. And I'm going to make him pay because, like I said, racism doesn't have its place in 2016, in my set, it was a joke, but uh, when you do a mistake once, it can be a mistake, but when you do it twice and three times, that's not a mistake. Why do you think that's not a, a, as big of a story as, like, I, I, <clears throat> you know, obviously people in the boxing media and stuff know about that, but it seems like, like Kovalev's getting a pass almost from, like, the mainstream media. Like, why do you think that is? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe because he's white. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Honestly, I really don't know. But at the end of the day, I don't really care. I need to focus on my fight. It can be racist. It can be this and that. Uh, we call a monkey a monkey. We call a liar a liar. And we and we have to call a racist a racist. Kovalev is a liar racist or liar uh, is a is a liar and is a and is racist, so, but uh, like I said, um, I don't need to think about those things. I need to think about my game plan, my match. Uh, I need to think about what I have to do to win the fight, and that's and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh. Well, what? Why do you think he's uh, avoided the whole talk about the bet and that stuff? I, I haven't heard anything coming from his end coming about it. Why is he avoiding it? Simple, because the truth. So when you know it's truth, you don't want to talk about it because you know like deep down inside that you were, say, you were saying that because you were taking it. So, and he knows now that that's kind of like uh, 
unacceptable in 2016 to think that way. Uh, he's not a model. Uh, he's a champion. He's supposed to sh uh, show the example. He's supposed to be a pioneer. And right now, uh, he just gave the boxer, the Russian boxer, all people in Russia, a bad reputation. So Freddie Roach has worked with Kovalev before. Has he shared any of the things that he might do good that you think he feels you can explore, that you have some advantages second time? Uh, of course, because sometimes uh, uh, Kovalev in the past was coming uh, in Freddie's gym. Uh, like uh, he, he likes to travel uh, to the hometown uh, guys because he doesn't have a fan base, but uh, he's like a homeless. He doesn't have any gym. <laughs> he was going to Freddie's gym, he was going to this gym, that gym, because he doesn't have a home, he's a homeless, he doesn't have a fan base, so that's why he's all around the world. <laughs> you, said, you said you're the cash cow, you always said that. What, what do you think makes you that and not these other guys? But look, like I said, I'm not a liar. Numbers don't lie. If you watch the, if you look at the numbers, I generate more than 20 millions in my country. I sold over than 100,000 tickets in my career so far, and I'm not even done. So there's not a lot of athletes or boxers who did that yet. So I generate 20, more than 20 million in my career. I sold over the 100,000 cake tickets. So that's why they call me back home the cash car. Like I'm the, yeah, I'm the cash car. <laughs> so when, when you see him in Canada, you gotta do that face-to-face -face the week of the fight. How important is that? You, do, you, do you get anything out of the face-off? Do you have to win that? Does the fight start before you get in the ring? Uh, right now, I don't really think about that. I'm thinking about my game plan. I'm thinking about my strategy. I'm thinking to, to train hard every day because every day it's a day to get better and better. And right now, I feel like a kid in a candy store with Freddie Roach because every day I'm excited to get back to the gym to learn because uh, Freddie is teaching me good stuff. So like I said, uh, I'm a kid uh, in the candy store right now. You know, Memo told me he's, he, you're punching harder this camp. That's what you guys are working on. Do, do you expect the power to show up in the fight and be a difference? Uh, definitely, I'm physically stronger. Uh, I'm doing so far so good in the camp. I'm very happy with my team. I'm very happy with Freddie Roach. Uh, he's right now, he's doing beyond my expectation, and I'm very glad. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Uh, Radio Rahi with Jean Pascal.